If you're a Salesforce customer and you want to start getting the benefits of going headless, you have the choice to switch to a new front end. You have the choice to switch to Salesforce Composable Storefront. To help you understand more about Composable Storefront from Salesforce, I'm gonna use the same model I've used to review several other storefronts, the one with nine points that I did in a video earlier, and I'll leave the link in the corner, and I'll also include the other videos as well so you can see more about storefronts. The reviews I'm doing on storefronts are not meant as a roasting, like a proper YouTube roasting. No, they're actually meant as a balanced review. It's there to help you understand whether this should be in your shortlist. So here's a quick note on the method that I've used to review all the storefronts so far. If you've heard this method before and you've been through this before, you're more than welcome to skip ahead to the next chapter. And I've put the chapter links in there for you so you don't have to watch everything. Okay, just a note on the process and the methodology I use. Yes, I used my nine considerations that I did in the video but I also did a whole bunch of other things. For PWA and performance characteristics, I used the Google Lighthouse scores. This helps give me a little bit of objectivity, although ultimately a lot of these results are down to how the site is actually implemented. So what I tried to do to neutralize that was to take three example sites from each storefront and to do an analysis of both mobile and desktop. And not only that, I did those tests five times and took the highest results for each of those combinations. I then took those highest results, averaged them out to give me a good indication of how the storefront might be performing. Number one, the technology stack. First, a bit of history. Mobify was one of the first independent storefront or front end as a service suppliers. Salesforce acquired them back in 2020 and then released it as PWA kit. Recently, it's been rebranded as the Composable Storefront, and that's what I'm reviewing today. Composable Storefront uses React at its core, and it uses Shakara UI for its front-end componentry. What makes it stand out is it doesn't use Next.js for things like server-side rendering or some of the advanced PWA features. It actually has its own SDK. It has its own implementation. That might be difficult for some of you who have developers who specialize in Next.js or want to take advantage of Next.js features. But I guess it does limit the exposure for these core components from a security standpoint. Number two, how open is the tech platform? Although big parts of the platform are based on open technologies and generic technology like React, it is limited to Salesforce implementations only. What this means is that if you do have multiple sites on different vendor technologies, you're going to have to find an alternative storefront for those technologies because you can't share it across both. However, you could spend a bit more time in the application architecture and build out more layers of separation and maybe build some components that developers can share across different platforms. Number three, how many PWA characteristics does the storefront support? As I said earlier, I'm going to use Google Lighthouse and conduct a number of tests for mobile and desktop and take the averages of all of the tests that I'm going to do to work out how well it supports these characteristics. Composable Storefront had good results for SEO with an average of 81 and very high results for best practices with an average score of 94. It's also pretty good at accessibility with an average score of 80, but the mobile performance is a little bit disappointing with an average score of 41. However, the desktop performance is pretty good. It's reaching 74. The caveat on these scores is that there is a dependency on how well the developers have implemented the storefront. Also, sites running the composable storefront are running at least twice the speed of other commerce cloud implementations. Number four, rendering implementation. As I said earlier, Composable Storefront has its own implementation of server-side rendering, which can be easily switched on and off. In fact, you can switch between client-side rendering, server-side rendering, an isomorphic mode, or some hybrid mode. Number five, how flexible is the user experience? 
Composable Storefront comes with a Chakra UI implementation. Chakra UI is a simple, modular, accessible, open source component library for React. Although it's not a fully fledged design system, it does have all the base components that you need to build any application. For most of you out there, you will not want to go to the huge effort to build an entire e-commerce site from a set of base components. What you want is an accelerator or a starting site, a demo site that you can iterate from and customize. And that's where the Salesforce SI community come in. There's a growing number of partners building accelerators for composable storefront with a set of out of the box integrations into lots of headless systems like Search, for instance, Algolia, or headless CMS like Ampliance. Number six, how is the storefront deployed and hosted? The platform is hosted on the Salesforce Manage Runtime, which is basically a set of serverless infrastructure for running your React storefront applications, a CDN for caching, and an API proxy for making API calls to third parties. All the documentation explains how scalable the infrastructure is, but I couldn't find any published SLAs. Those are probably within your Salesforce contract. Number seven, integration and API orchestration. To me, this was one of the most intriguing parts of the storefront, as it doesn't have a separation between the data access, the data layer, and the UI layer, meaning it doesn't have a BFF or a separate GraphQL layer. Instead, it relies on direct calls from within the application. To prevent all those security issues and sandbox issues that you usually get when you're making calls from browser applications, they provide an API proxy service. So you call the API proxy, and then that API proxy will call your headless CMS or your headless search or any other APIs that you might be using. Look, I really don't know how I feel about this. On the one hand, it is much easier and simpler to do it like that, to do the calls from the application. But on the other hand, if you're not careful, you're mixing up your data access, all your data and your API calls with your UI, with your front end and your presentation. And if you're not careful, you're gonna end up with a monolith. So when you're designing this, you need to be very careful with your application architecture. Um, that should be sorted out by your SI or the accelerator application, but it is a concern. It's something you should really take seriously. Otherwise, it may be difficult to maintain it in the future. Number eight, support and documentation. The great thing is you can continue to use all the same support arrangements that you have with Salesforce with the composable storefront. The documentation is fairly light, but there are getting started guides. You get full access to lots of GitHub repos. And you also get full access, obviously, to the Chakra UI documentation, which is pretty detailed. Number nine, ecosystem. One of the fantastic benefits of Salesforce Commerce Cloud is the extensive SI community. But you've got to be careful because not all of them are currently enabled to do composable storefront or have the level of React skills necessary. It's best to do a bit of research and check to see if they have an accelerator or a demo site using the composable storefront out of the box and ready to go. Composable storefront should only be used if you're an existing Salesforce customer or deciding to move to Salesforce Commerce Cloud. It's an easy way in which you can move to a headless architecture, start benefiting from headless architecture while remaining on Salesforce. Salesforce customers will basically gain far more agility in building their customer experiences and start to benefit from best of breed suppliers like content management, asset management, personalization, and search. This is particularly great if you're already using these suppliers to deliver services across different parts of your existing customer experiences. If you've used Commerce Cloud before, you know that the fact that Salesforce is going to be maintaining the integration of the APIs with Commerce Cloud is a real benefit. And you know that it's gonna support all of the new versions going forward. Although the web vitals that came out of Google Lighthouse, particularly around mobile performance, could be improved, Composable Storefront does actually perform double the speed of an existing commerce cloud implementation. The best advice I can give you if you do go down a composable storefront front-end route 
is to spend some time choosing the SI because ultimately that's where the rubber hits the road because they will be delivering the accelerator, the site out of the box. They will be delivering the out of the box integrations with other third party components and other headless systems and best of breed suppliers. So that's it for Composable Storefront and the next review will be coming very soon. So if you haven't subscribed already, it'd be worth subscribing right now. And if you don't want to miss the next review, don't forget to press that bell button. And one more thing, if you did like this video, please press that like button so this video can be shared with many others and they can also benefit from this review. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.